this is Andy Schumann from Ed Gizmos with a, another interview with an innovator in medical technology. I have the privilege of interviewing uh, Reza Saifabadi, who is the co-founder and chief operations officer of Pediometrics. And we're going to talk about the SoftSpot app. So welcome. And I like your background. I imagine it's not where you really are, but do you have a green sure. screen? It looks so good. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. And it's a pleasure to be with you today. Yeah. So, so give me a, a, a background of Pediometrics and, and your own background. What sort of uh, education do you have, training? Sure. So uh, like starting with the company, uh, so, uh, so the company is founded by four scientists. You know, we are all alumni of Johns Hopkins, Princeton, Harvard, and uh, NIH. So, uh, and uh, like the founder and, you know, including myself, one of the co-founders, have started this company based on a personal experience as, a, as parents. So uh, we have a child, you know, me and my wife, who is the founder and CEO of the company. We had a child who went through a condition uh, which is called plagiocephaly, and that's uh, the primary motivation for us to uh, start a, a company that uh, can help parents and physicians for uh, early detection and monitoring of the condition. Because you know this condition has uh, is affecting uh, many babies nowadays in the U.S. and many other countries, and uh, the key is. Uh, to like detect it early and you know so you can benefit from minimal you know uh, less costly interventions uh, so as far as the uh, so we started the company in 2018 uh, and uh, like I said my other co-founders are all scientists and you know have years of experience in you know using uh, uh, AI and computer vision in pediatric health that, that's Just, wonderful uh, so you all have good pedigrees, so that, that's impressive. And you said the company started about three years ago, is that right? Four years ago, yeah, almost years like ago. four years ago, yeah. Okay, and you have uh, FDA approval <clears throat> for what you called a soft spot application. Yeah. Correct, and uh, most of my viewers are physicians and pediatricians where, where we are very familiar with plagiocephaly. And typically what I do is I have a suspect child. Uh, I have the ability to refer them to what we call a noggin clinic, which is usually uh, staffed by a pediatric neurosurgeon uh, or a pediatric plastic surgeon. And they typically will evaluate a child, do uh, measurements of the skull and make a determination if the child needs uh, a helmet, physical therapy, range of motion therapy, and in some instances, uh, surgery to correct uh, things such as uh, craniosynostosis. So, but you, you're kind of, the, you've developed an application that makes it easier for pediatricians and or parents to exactly. monitor and detect plagiocephaly. Yeah, exactly. So that's exactly what happened to my child. So we were introduced, like we were referred to a, a pediatric neurosurgeon at Children's National. And it took us like two months to uh, see him. Mm -hmm. And we all know that the first four to five months of age is critical because that's a golden window when the skull is still malleable. So, uh, so our, you know, and that was the original idea, you know, why not pediatricians have a tool to quantitatively measure at the very earliest stage, let's say at one month, well checkup, and then continued at two months, three months, four months, up to six months, every month. So that was the original idea to, to, to fill this gap so we can allow early detection and monitoring and intervention. And we know that physical therapy is highly effective. So according to two large uh, studies with more than 4,000 uh, subjects, uh, physical therapy and at-home conservative therapy can be effective up to 80%. So 80% of babies with the formation of plagiocephaly and brachiocephaly can avoid going through helmet, but only if they are detected early and the intervention has started early. 
Yeah. And I would remind our audience, this is uh, often a problem, particularly for babies that have graduated from neonatal intensive care units because the premature skull is very malleable and uh, the position of the skull in the NICU uh, has a great uh, effect on the shape of the skull. And there are some uh, adventurous neonatologists who invented some special caps to uh, avoid exactly. uh, patients from misshapen heads. So, so take us through the uh, concept from the idea that you had to uh, implementation, approval from the FDA, and then we'll talk about a few other things. So I remember, you know, my wife uh, read a book about like, it, it's like around like late 2017. So when we detect, like re realize that our son has a plagiocephaly, she read a book about like how to fix pediometric, you know, uh, plagiocephaly. And in the book, it was recommended that every week or every other week, you take pictures from the head and then use a, like a ruler and see if you can, you know, do those kind of measurements. And, you know, when my wife was talking about this, I said, you know, this is uh, probably, you know, you know, this is, this is not the, the best way to do that. And why not uh, be using like a mobile application that can do similar thing that, you know, you can scan the head and, you know, it gives you measurement uh, accurately. So that was the original idea. But from there to making like a, uh, a product that can go through FDA and get approval. It was like a long story, like let's say three to four years, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. Uh, so, but that was the beginning. And then we went to literature and realized that there has been many publications, you know, probably starting 2003, 2005, 2010, that people have suggested to use photographic images to uh, measure the... Uh, cranial indices associated with plagiocephaly, brachiocephaly, and scaphocephaly. So, and then we got like the kind of the, the permission like, or that, that yes, that's possible. So that was the, uh, the way we started. But you know, then it came, you know, how you can make like a, a tool that can be used by a novice user. It can find the, the right uh, uh, landmarks in the image, you know, because they can, uh, you know, take images not in the right way that we want, and then, you know, extract those information in accurate way. So that's, that's, that's the, you know, when our scientists uh, background came in and, you know, help us to develop something uh, that can produce. But th this was kind of the, his, you know, the starting point. And uh, after we, we got the idea, you know, me and my wife, we approached uh, our other co-founder, co who is a professor at, uh, uh, George Washington University and also a PI principal investigator at uh, uh, Children's National. So my wife used to work with her with him uh, during her PhD on mm -hmm. another project, but we already knew that he has been working on cranial synostosis for 10 years. And his background is also in computer vision and AI. He's a very known scientist, you know. So, and then as soon as we introduced the idea, he said, okay, I'm in, let's do it. And um, so that was how we found the company in 2018. And then, you know, uh, I can, you know, walk you through the next step, if, you know. If, okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I've never been to a noggin clinic, but I know uh, that the cranial indices are precise measurements taken by a neurosurgeon. Now, do they uh, normally use calipers to take these measurements? Yes. So the, major, the majority of measurements are done by calipers. Uh, but uh, there are also some, you know, hospitals also use uh, 3D scanners, such as 3DMD or other type of 3D scanners uh, for more comprehensive measurements, but they are used on an occasional basis, I would say, and they are expensive, you know, not easy to use, bulky, usually use it like full room, you know, so that's, that's okay. another alternative, but the majority of the measurements are done by Okay. Yes. And, and from the cranial indices, a determination is made whether a child uh, qualifies for physical therapy or a uh, helmet is, is, or surgery. Is that correct? Yeah. So it depends. So I think the age matters. So for, I think the first thing that a neurosurgeon makes sure is, is it a synostoric or non-synostoric? So is it cranial synostoric? So cranial synostoric is pretty 
uncommon, like one in 2000. So the majority of, so you can imagine how many false positive, you know, referrals does a neurosurgeon get, right? Because, right. you know, pediatricians are not uh, fully trained to, to differentiate, you know, cranial synostosis from, uh, so that's one thing we can help, obviously we can. So, uh, and then, you know, depending on the, if the baby is more than like five or six, you know, the only way you can uh, correct is helmet. But if the baby is younger, you know, you can definitely benefit from a physical therapy uh, as well as at-home conservative therapy. And I think another point that uh, I, I, sh I would like to make is, uh, you know, literature suggests that almost 70% uh, of babies with plagiocephaly uh, suffer from a condition called torticollis, which is mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. stiffness in the neck muscle. So, you know, that's why, uh, you know, plagiocephaly is hand in hand with torticollis and why physical therapy can greatly benefit if the baby is still uh, below uh, five to six months of age. So uh, how did you develop the application? Did you uh, take the cranial indices or figure out a way from photos to uh, accurately uh, derive cranial indices from photos with an application? So, so from the, so from the bird's eye view, we can measure uh, like a cranial index, and cranial vault asymmetry index or cranial vault asymmetry. So these two tells us, you know, so CI or cranial index tells you if the baby has a brachycephaly or a scaphocephaly. So brachycephaly is when the, the head is like shorter than normal and a scaphocephaly is, you know, when the head is elongated, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so CI gives us this, you know, so depending on the measurements, you can say whether the baby has uh, either of these and what is the severity score, right? You know, is it mild, moderate or severe? And then we have CVAI or cranial vault asymmetry index, which is basically the difference between the right and left diagonals uh, divided by the longer, the longest. So that, and that tells you how much asymmetry you have. And, you know, asymmetry means like the plagiocephaly. So using these two indices, you know, we can tell, you know, what, if, what is the condition and what is uh, the, the degree of severity. So that's, uh, that's kind of, you know, what we measure from uh, the, the photo. So, and the way the app works, so we take a very short video, like 10 second video from the bird's eye view. And then our algorithm finds the, you know, the right uh, pictures. And then uh, we do apply our proprietary uh, algorithms to find those uh, uh, indices. So, and then we take average and standard deviation over those five uh, measurements. So that's, you know, and then we put them in a report and every month that the physician uh, does the measurement, we add another data point. So you can see a history of, you know, uh, measurements over time, you know, ideally starting at one month up to six months. Of so you can see how the baby is progressing, you know, how, how effective the physical therapy is, how effective parents or how compliant parents are with at-home conservative therapy. Okay. So uh, I, I looked at your website. So there's an application that one can use on Android or iOS based phones, and it requires the application of a, uh, a band or some, some uh, uh, cover for the head and placement of yes. a sticker. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so we call it Soft Spot Kit, right? Actually, you know, I have, if I you can see, you know, here, probably not. So it's kind of like a, uh, a stocking cap, you just, you know, you put it on the baby's head to alleviate the head, hair artifacts. Okay. That's the primary reason. And to see the, the hair perimeters pretty nicely. And then you also put a stick, a smiley sticker, which allows us in our algorithm to find the right uh, pictures from which we can measure uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the indices. Okay. And this is something that one does in the office. Uh, the pediatrician does this or, or your assistants, or is it something a parent can do both. by telehealth? Yeah, both. Actually, we, we, so we, we recommend that physicians start at one month of age, uh, you know, in their office. And then, you know, they can give this uh, soft, what we call soft spot kiss to parents. So they take it home and they can do it uh, between the visits or before the next visit. So but if, you know, if physicians uh, prefer to save time, they can, you know, let parents do that, or if they want to, you know, but at least they can start the first measurement in the office, and then 
uh, let parents do it at three and five months of age, then there is no uh, bell basis. So, but uh, to answer your questions, both it is designed uh, uh, to be used by both parents and physicians. And mm -hmm. um, in an in office setting, uh, a nurse or you know, uh, like PA can do that, you know, on behalf of the physician. So uh, that's uh, if if the physician is busy, you know, they can uh, they do do that as well. So I might uh, turn around and ask you, can, uh, although you mentioned that pediatricians can do the first thing and parents can do it at home, what about parents do, doing the test at home? And I say, I want you to contact this company and you're going to send them the, the cap and so forth. And no is that problem. possible? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we can... It's all totally your decision to do it in office or I think the we heard from you know our pediatrician advisors told us that the, at least the first one could be done in office. So but right. we are totally for you know whatever pediatricians are up to. And you know, you can hold, let's say we can send you like 20 of these or whatever you want, and they can you know pick it up from your office. That's one way, or we can ship it to their address, you know, directly. Per FDA, this is a prescription only device. Okay. So parents cannot use it like uh, over the counter. They Understand. have to go through their pediatricians. Clinic. So people have to travel great distances sometimes, even in the US, to see a neurosurgeon and they have PAs that work with them. So your product, thinking you know, inside and outside the box, can facilitate telehealth visits by neurosurgeons to monitor and track people. So that's a, a terrific market for you. Absolutely, I think I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we, I think we, we, we have thought about it, but I didn't know the like telehealth scenario and the fact that we can work with the PA. Well, I think that for sure, we will also, you know, look, look into that. Yeah, that's or even, you know, a nurse or ancillary personnel, and then the ones that uh, are screened into see the neurosurgeon that makes best use of their time. And, I, think, yeah. I think that's the, the reason we start with pediatricians, you know, from the get go is kind of neurosurgeons at, at the bottom of the funnel, if you wish, you know. Mm -hmm. So by the time they see if uh, they see a neurosurgeon, they might have lose some, some time, right? So that's, you know, let's say there are five months, six months, you know. That I think, uh, you know, that's that's my only, uh, mm -hmm. you know, cons you know, uh, my, my only consideration. But otherwise, I, I totally agree. You know, that's they are, you know, and not only neurosurgeons but also physical therapists. You know, uh, occupational therapists. Yeah, it's a good. So, we have seen so many people, you know, have signed up in our website who are PAs, PTs, uh, like yeah. OTs, you know, and, and other stuff. So, Can you diagnose cranial synostosis? So no, but I have a good news. So we have, we are, you know, we have received a very, you know, good score from an NIH, NIH grant, which allow us to develop uh, the next generation of our product, you know, over the next two years, and that allows us, you know, to uh, dif like to to differentiate synostoric and non synostoric So that's one of the main uh, goal of that, uh, you know, that. Uh, uh, large grant that we are receiving from NI, you know, the NIH, NIDCR, like uh, the National Institute of uh, Craniofacial and Dental. Uh, so the, the, the goal is to make a comprehensive head scan and also to, to, uh, to, make, to make a tool available at pediatric offices who can do uh, cranial stenosis versus non stenosis you know. Uh, right. You know. So yeah, we are working on it and it's coming. Interesting. Then, and, and uh, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but I uh, I've been writing about technology for contemporary pediatrics for 30 years, and I put out a uh, multi-article tech supplement. Uh, and uh, to uh, preface that, I, I talked about the his not only the history of technology, but going forward, what we can expect. So I expect we're gonna have 3D printers in our offices that we can use to develop splints. So it's not a difficult stretch to imagine a low cost 3D printer to uh, using your app perhaps to develop helmets. Yeah, I think, so we, we have seen like, so right nowadays 3D printed helmets are a reality, so there are companies doing that. 
I think yeah. we are we are we position ourselves as a uh, medical imaging company, like you know, computer vision right. and imaging. So we are kind of in a diagnosis or measurement side, and you know, uh -huh. we would we would we would like to stay you know focus on that. But at the same time, we we are also you know we have been approached by many of these uh, large uh, helmet companies to collaborate. You know. Mm -hmm. because our technologies can be a complement to what they those guys are doing so but totally you know i'm on the same page but probably not uh, so i think we would like to focus on the uh, like you know imaging and you know uh, diagnosis you know part of okay the and so this is all very exciting uh uh going forward do you have any thoughts about other uh, applications so you take a photograph and you do measurements and develop AI algorithms for quantifying uh, things. You know, in, in this case, it's plagiocephaly. I'm just wondering uh, other potential applications uh, for this kind of technology. So I think right right now our focus are like you know DPB, the formation of plagiocephaly and brachycephaly, uh, head circumference measurements, which is done at every relatives. And also the cranial synostos. So those are like our immediate next uh, steps. You know, like uh, HC, we are, you know, we are also, you know, have some publications already. You know, hopefully we will make it available. And then the cranial synostosis or the softest, what we call softest, but 3D, like, you know, so what we have, you know, get clear for so far is from FT is like softest, but 2D. But softest, but 3D would be a comprehensive tool for uh, like it kind of give you the power of like a, uh, uh, like a three D scanner, which otherwise is available in like uh, you know hospitals or in uh, helmet clinics. So now you can have it in, on your smartphone, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in a hand of a pediatrician. So that's <laughs> what you know we are working on, and you know, but uh, yes, there. Are, I think you know if we see you know there are opportunities in other areas, you know, we are uh, definitely Ready to do that. Thank you, uh, Reza, for. Uh, agreeing to be interviewed, and I'm very excited about SoftSpot and its potential for allowing pediatricians and families to uh, monitor plagiocephaly and potentially in the future to uh, diagnose and perhaps even treat uh, uh, other uh, cranial anomalies in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.